Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part three for our Ninja Platformer tutorial series. This free YouTube series was made possible by the students who purchase my courses on my website. So if you're interested in those, go check them out. There'll be a link in the description. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to take our character and we're going to start setting up their animations. So let's click on our player here. Now, our player character is actually just a node inside of the world scene. But uh, that can give us some problems later because say we want to um, have multiple levels and we want to be able to have a character in each level, our player character right here would then, all of these nodes would have to be duplicated around to those different levels. Instead, we can actually convert our player character into its own scene. And then we can instance that player scene inside of different levels if we were to choose to do that. And it could just make organizing your project a little bit easier too. If you think about nodes as the building blocks, kind of the Legos of this world, then scenes are kind of the finished, finished objects that we build with them. So let's right click on our player. And down here we can do save branch as scene. And it will just save that branch, meaning that node and all of its children as its own scene. I have it called player. And this is new to me, I didn't know about this. But you can see down here, there's a reset position, reset rotation and reset scale buttons. And we actually do want to reset the position because currently our player is placed in kind of a weird spot in the world. But when we place the player in their own scene, we actually want them to be at the origin. So actually, I want to show you what happens if we don't reset the position. I'm just going to save it. If we come into the player scene, now you can see that the origin of the player uh, is clear up here. But the player is positioned down here, just like they were in the world, right? Uh, but what we actually want is for this player object to be at the origin and so we can come over here to transform and reset the transform I'm doing it manually and I can save and when I come back into the world you can see now my players jump back clear over here uh, and we just need to reposition uh, this instance of the player I can grab it uh, come on grabbing the tile map so I'm going to lock the tile map layer that should allow me to grab the player did I lock the player Ding. there we go I had to click off of the tile map in order to move the player now we can remove we can move them put them wherever we want and when we update the transform of this player right here, it's actually just an instance of our player scene. We come back into the player scene, we can see that it is still at zero, zero, where we want it to be set up in the scene. In order to animate our player character, we're going to need to set up an animation player node. So we'll press this little plus button here. We'll do animation player, and we can just leave it called that. And now we get this little animation tab down here at the bottom of the screen. And actually, because we have an upper and a lower, we're going to need two animation players as well. So we'll call this one animation player upper. And we'll make, I'm gonna hit control, I'm gonna select it, hit control D, that will duplicate that node. And do animation player lower. You can also right click the node and there's a duplicate option. Uh, maybe there's not a duplicate option. Yeah, there is right there. Okay, so we'll click on the animation player lower for now. We're actually going to ignore the upper. But for the lower, let's create a new animation. So we need this animation tab open. And we can click this animation button and do new. And right here, we're going to call this run. Okay, now 
I'm not exactly a fan of this change in newer versions of Godot, but by default, um, we get the the duration of each frame as 0 0.03333, which when I since I work with Pixlr, I find this to be incredibly um, a useless number. Uh, but I'm going to just change this to 0 0.1, which is what the default used to be. And that's a lot more beneficial for the types of animations that I'm working with, okay? And then I'm going to check this apply snap, snapping to timeline cursor as well. It'll just allow us to snap along the timeline if we click here, okay? Now we can zoom in by holding uh, control and then scrolling. We do wanna zoom into our timeline a little bit. You can also do it here. And for the very first frame of our animation, we're gonna to come to our lower. Uh, we're gonna click on Sprite Lower. And now over here, the Animation tab should still be open. We can come into Animation, and we can actually manipulate the frame that we're on. See that here? And we can key them. So this is actually a good first frame, frame zero. So we'll just press the key button and it wants to create a new track and create a reset track, that's all fine, we'll just press OK. And then for our second animation, right lower, we want to go to frame two, frame one, which is the second frame, and we'll key that. And now we can actually just hit the key button as we cycle through, now that we've set up this um, track down here, we can just hit the key button and it will cycle through each frame automatically for us. So E, 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 E. And there we made it through all of them. See that? Made it through all of those. Okay. Now this animation it is actually 0.6 in length. So we can set this to 0.6. That. And then we want this animation to loop. Press loop here. Now we can see that animation playing out for our character, that run animation. And we'll just leave that for now. We'll save this. And then we can come into our script and we need to get access to this animation player node inside of our player script. Now, because this node is a child of the player, it's actually pretty easy to do. The way we can do this is by clicking on the animation player node, lower, dragging it over to about here, pressing control, and then releasing. And that will create this on ready var variable inside of our script. Now, there, what is a variable? It's just a reference. Um, it's, just a, it's just a name that stores some value. And in this case, it's a reference to our animation player, right? Animation player lower. Uh, why is it on ready? Why does it have this on ready keyword before it? Because in order to get access to a node that is a child, you actually have to wait a little bit until it's ready. So that's what on ready means. It just means wait until we're ready and then grab a reference to this animation player. Because if we're not ready yet, if we try and grab a reference, it might not be there. We might get nothing, okay? So now what we can do is we can actually animate our player depending on whether or not they're moving. Now, how can we tell if they're moving? Well, we're actually just gonna tell if they're trying to move, okay? And we can tell if they're trying to move if input axis, if this x input does not equal zero, right? If this equals zero, then we know they're not trying to move. So if x input does not equal zero, we know they're trying to move. We'll say animation player lower dot play run. We have the run animation, right? Uh, so we, can, we could run the game and just play that, but if we stop in the game, we can show this problem. The animation keeps going, right? Um, so even if we're moving and we stop, 
the animation keeps going. Oh, we need a, we need like a idle or a stand animation. So let's come into our animation player. Lower here, I'm gonna click animation. I'm gonna click this animation button and do new. We'll call this stand. This, come back to, so that's a new animation. We'll come back to our sprite lower and we'll come to this frame here. We'll just key this frame, frame six. Great. Now we have a stand animation. We can make it 0.1. This one doesn't have to loop. Um, since it's just one frame, should be fine. And now we can come back into our script and we can say, okay, so if X input does not equal zero, we're run. Else, animation player lower dot play stand so if animation if our x input does equal zero we want to stand now it actually might be useful to swap the logic on this because i think it'll be a little bit easier to understand sometimes it can be useful to consider the logic so if x input equals zero so if we're not moving then stand otherwise run okay and now we have our character and they run when we move and they don't run when we don't move right perfect now i'm gonna up this to 80 just for now because it's driving me crazy that it's so slow and we're going to work on setting up our animations for the upper as well so if you want to pause the video right now and try to set up the upper animation um, as kind of a challenge to yourself and then try to get it to run inside of the script as well as a challenge to yourself, this would be a great, a great time to step outside of the tutorial just a little bit. I know that's scary. Step outside the tutorial and try to see if you can do it yourself. Tutorial videos like these are only useful as far as you are willing to be brave and step outside of them. If you just do the exact same thing as the t tutorial creator the whole time, uh, you're gonna be limited in how much you learn from it. So I highly recommend experimenting yourself and stepping outside of the tutorial. Let's go into our player upper, and I'm gonna do it now, so uh, you can pause the video if you wanna try it yourself. And for the upper, we'll make a new animation, and we'll name it run. And again, we have to set this to point 0.1, and snap is still on though. Now we'll click on sprite upper, so we've got the upper animation. We'll key this first frame, then we'll go over by one. So over by one as well here, and then key, and then key, and then key. And then key. That should be six as well. Now you can see that there's kind of a duplicate frame in here. Um, I just did that because it was easier. And then we'll want to loop this and we'll put this at 0.6 as well. But you will notice that there are two frames that are technically different frames that look exactly the same. You could actually delete the second one in both cases and it would work exactly how it should. Okay, now we've got run. Let's create our stand animation. New stand and we'll come back to sprite upper and looks like we could use any of these base frames i'm just going to use zero for this well, that surprises me did i do too many i think i did we'll see we'll find out That looks right, okay. Okay, that looks right. And then we have stand, which is just this. I'll set the length to 0.1. Come back to our player, drag over sprite lower. No, 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 not sprite lower. Animation player, oh, we already have lower. We need upper. Animation player upper. And remember, it's click, drag, then press control, drop, okay? Order there matters, it's a little bit finicky. Now we can just say animation player upper dot play 
stand and then animation player lower no upper dot play run just like the other one for now we're manually playing both animation players at the same time later we'll actually just play one animation player and then we'll sync them so it's important that the names are actually the same because of how we're going to set things up later so make sure that when you're setting up your animation on your animation on your uh, on the animation player that you that you name the animations exactly the same let's see how this looks okay let's check to make sure that they're synced so run here as goes all the way to frame five zero three four five and run here goes all the way to frame six zero one two three four I know it goes to five. I did it right. And then stand. This could be frame zero or it could be frame six, I think. I think six is actually the one that I intended. Um, yeah, that, that looks good. So there we go. We've got our animation set up and we are, uh, or the, the basic ones, we'll be adding more later. We've got the basic animation set up and we've we've animated our character using the input in the next video we're actually going to start adding uh, some gravity to our character i maybe said that last time so psych it was actually two videos later but we'll be adding gravity and we'll be managing our character controller a little bit more so stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video and learned something please subscribe to the channel please leave a like and I will see you all in the next video.